what is going on again everyone as you can see in the office again today it's gloomy nasty and rainy outside so all of my appointments canceled that being said it's a great time to go over another tutorial today we're talking davinci resolve and the stabilizer i'm going to go over the few settings that it has so you know exactly what they do and i'm going to teach you how to get that super smooth buttery real estate footage let's go Welcome back. As I said, we're going to jump right on into this stabilization feature. So let's jump into screen capture. If you may notice this clip from my last tutorial, if you watched it, we worked on it precisely. This nice little speed ramping action. If you haven't seen the speed ramping tutorial, check it out in case you need it. If you already know how to do it, then let's jump on. We're going to talk about stabilizing and what all these things do. Now there's two ways you can get to the stabilizing. You can get to it right here on this screen. Scroll down, you'll see stabilization right there. And here's all the options. They are the exact same options as the way I'm about to show you, but I personally do everything in the color screen because I don't know, I like the little graph at the bottom for some reason. So I'm gonna jump on over to color. Then I'll come on up to this right here, which looks like the tracker. You'll have all of these. It'll normally start on window. This is what it starts on. Come click this and you can go to stabilizer. Now I'm going to go over a few of the options here on the stabilizer and it might make sense if I explain them to you in the edit mode so you can see them a little bit better. Back on the edit mode, you've got three options you can choose from perspective, similarity, and translation. Do I know exactly what these three phrases mean? No, I do not. But I can tell you from experience that when you look at them, perspective is the most harsh, similarity is medium, and translation is the least harsh or the worst version of the program. Now, I can't tell you one works better than the other because honestly, they all work better for different situations. I always try similarity first. I find it to be the smoothest with the least amount of jump and craziness going on in the screen. And it seems to work really well for aerial footage in particular. So similarity is what I'm going to go with when I go to this clip. Now let's go down to these three options right here. We've got cropping ratio, smooth and strength. This may seem really weird to you. You would think that the higher you go up, the better it works and that does actually work for smooth and strength but cropping ratio is different i don't know exactly what this means but what it seems like to me this is how small you will allow your frame to go during the cropping process if you're worried more about the image quality over the stabilization that's provided you would want this at a high number one would mean you don't want any cropping into the frame at all. Point, oh, let's grab it and bring it all the way over. 0.25 means that you can basically crop it all the way down to quarter ratio as long as it looks good. I keep mine at 0.25 because it will give you the most amount of cropping, but it won't give you all of the cropping. What do I mean by that? Is that it's not automatically gonna go down to quarter percent every time. It's saying that you allow it to go that low depending on how much stabilization is required. So if it only requires 0.5%, that's all it's gonna give you, but you're allowing the computer to go smaller during its process. So if you want it to be smoother, then go all the way low with the cropping ratio. If you're worried more about the quality of the image and not allowing it to crop down, you wanna go really high. So I go 0.25% for my cropping ratio. Smooth, this is how smooth you actually want the footage to be or how, how much kind of flow between frames you're allowing. When I'm trying to get things butter smooth, especially for these real estate videos, maybe if I was doing some sort of cinematic production, it might be a little bit different, but these are real estate videos that people only look at for a small amount of time. So my settings are very simple. I bring cropping ratio all the way down, smooth all the way up, and strength all the way up because I want this clip to look as smooth as possible for the five seconds it's on frame. That being said, 
I am now gonna jump on over to color mode so you can see all these same settings just in a different form. Now, we're back to the stabilizer, just like I just said. If you look down on the bottom, here's cropping ratio set all the way to 0.25. You can bring it up to one. 0.25 is where I have it, smooth strength. This is everything we just talked about. Here are these three settings right down here. Whenever you're ready, press the stabilize button. This will come up and it'll start doing your thing. I'm gonna let this kind of rock and roll, let it analyze through this one clip because I've already showed it to you. It's kind of jumpy, especially in certain sections. And we'll see just how it handled it as soon as the analyze is done. All right, now that the analyzing is done, you can look right down at the bottom over here and you can see all of these little bars. This is why I like to do it with a color because you can just see this right here. And I'm not really exactly sure what all of these are doing, but I just think it's cool to look at. The, the other reason I like it is because it has bypass stabilization right here. So if I click this on and off, you can instantly see the amount of crop at the end that was done. Not a lot. Now let's go through and full screen it and see how much cropping was actually done and what it looks like. Look at that. Super smooth, that whole jump section. If I go back to bypass, let's go back over here, full screen it again. Watch this little jump that happens. See that right there? I can go to it again. You can see that little jump every time. Uh, bumps up just like that. Click this back on. We'll go back to that same little jump, full screen it. Smooth out, just like butter, baby. Look at that. I'll just let it keep playing, I guess. Now you can hear that song in the background. That's gotta be annoying. But that's it. That's the stabilization right there. As I mentioned, I like everything. Cropping ratio all the way down, strength and smoothness all the way up. Because like I said, people are only seeing these for a short amount of time. And even if it's cropped into quarter percent, trust me, it'll look better than jumpy, horrible footage. Now I picked this because it was a good example of an aerial shot but this exact same process is what I use when I'm doing interior gimbal shots as well. I always use the same amount because if it doesn't work, you can always try a different one. If that wouldn't have worked very well, we could have gone over to perspective and tried that. And if that didn't work, the last one I would do is translation down here. Translation is always the last one I choose because I find it works smoothly the least amount of time. Similarity always number one. Perspective always the second one I try. Translation is always the third. Just keep in mind that whenever you're operating these different options, similarity, translation, and perspective, every time you change it, you have to re-click the stabilize button or the analyze button to let it go through the clip again in this new process. Just selecting it doesn't actually do it, so you've got to select it and repress the stabilize button and wait for it to stabilize again. Don't forget to do that. Trust me. That's it, that's all you need to know about stabilization. You can use this on aerial clips, you can use it on interior clips, you can use it on whatever clips you want, as long as you want that clip stabilized. So, that's all the information I got for you. As always, if you like the information I provide and the way I provided it, press like, mash subscribe, all that jazz. Catch you next time.